Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. Um, welcome to another edition of the Situation Room. My name is Jombor Bobak, and I'm going to be the host uh, for this session today as well. Um, just like yesterday, we're going to check in with two different film festivals from across the globe and discuss, discuss their situation under the COVID-19 pandemic, their histories, their aims and goals, and how they prepare for the future. My first guests are from Side by Side uh, Festival from Russia. Uh, so please welcome Julia Sultanova and Alina Pchelintseva. Hi, welcome. Welcome to the Teddy. Uh, we are very happy to have you here. Um, could you maybe start with uh, introducing your festival and uh, telling us a bit about its history? Uh, hello, hello to Berlinale, hello to Teddy, hello to everyone who can watch us. Uh, my name is Gulia Zultanova. I'm one of the organizers of the film festival uh, Side by Side, International Film Festival in Russia. Uh, some, some words about their festival and their goals. Uh, so Side by Side was uh, founded in 2008 in Russia. Right. And uh, yes, and uh, the main goal of the film festival is uh, to create a, an open cultural space uh, for showing uh, LGBT uh, few films for this uh, for discussions of all these uh, uh, films and also of issues like uh, homophobia, transphobia, yeah. gender inequality, and to improve the. Uh, general situation, uh, yes. especially in, in Russia. Yeah. So we we uh, the festival take uh, takes place um, th thirteen years, and uh, right. in the last years we are working in Saint Petersburg and in Moscow. But um, in the time when the state homophobia was not so uh, strong, so we could uh, arrange the film screenings and discussions in other Russian cities like Novosibirsk, Kemerovo, Tomsk. Yeah. These are th three Siberian cities. And also in Perm, which is in Ural, and yeah. uh, in Arkhangelsk, which is in the north of uh, the country. Right. So, so uh, this uh, uh, time was from uh, uh, 2010 to 2013, and uh, so we could we could make some uh, uh, tours uh, across Russia. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this yeah. Time. yeah. Yeah, and bring it to other parts of the country as well. Um, yes. Then let's talk about what exactly happened in 2013 that stopped uh, this uh, in initiative of bringing it to um, multiple parts of the country um, and how is the situation, the socio-political situation ever since in which you have to organize the festival? Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe I say some words about the uh, earlier time, so yeah, just please. To, to understand more what happened in 2013. So uh, before um, so before we started with the film festival, uh, there was not a big discussion about LGBT in Russian at all. So uh, the criminalization of homosexuality was banned uh, in uh, 1993, but it was not a result of the movement, but uh, a fulfillment of the uh, condi uh, condition of the uh, court of, Europe, uh, of the Council of Europe. Yeah. So Russia, Russia wanted to be uh, in the 90s. So Russia wanted to be um, democratic. Yes. So Russia wanted to be open. Uh, Russia wanted to enter international institutions, mm -hmm. like with uh, respectable uh, international institutions. And one of these institutions uh, is uh, the Council of Europe. Yes. And just to, to be able to be part of the European uh, of the uh, Council of Europe, uh, Russia had to ban the homosexual uh, the, the criminalization of homosexuality. Yeah. Yes, and um, of course there were some uh, LGBT activists uh, in the in the nineties, but uh, after. Uh, homosexual people who are free, not not uh, persecuted as criminals. Yeah. So uh, there were not so much uh, political activities in this uh, area, yeah. and so I can understand it, of course, because uh, people uh, 
finally were f could feel free, uh, could uh, live their lives. Yes. 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 And until uh, the middle of the 2000, uh, it was almost nothing in the political area. So people went to bars, people enjoyed mm -hmm. freedom, people uh, organized gay bars, lesbian bars, uh, and so on. But it was not a big discussion in the society. Yes, yeah, about it right. was, of course, homophobia, but this, the country opened step by step slowly also to uh, other gender uh, to other sexuality or gender identity yes, yes. and the, the goal of the film festival in, nine, in 2008 it was uh, to uh, strengthen this process yes? yes to make an open space uh, with the issues to discuss uh, exactly these issues yes? sure yeah yeah yeah, and the uh, first um, uh, five years, so let, let me say this like this, uh, they were, uh, were not so difficult. Of course, uh, there was a lot of problems, yes, but yeah. the state had uh, was uh, neutral. Yeah, okay. Yes? Sometimes they banned the festival, sometimes they let us go, but mm -hmm. it was not a... Uh, special institutionalized politics about yeah. LGBTs, and uh, that's why we could uh, uh, work a lot. Yes, yeah, and, okay. uh, uh, yes. But in 2013, uh, the political situation changed, mm -hmm. and um, so regime wanted to uh, be more repressive to survive. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because because. Uh, uh, it was clear that uh, a lot of people were against uh, the uh, situation. So they, a lot of people wanted uh, democratic elections, wanted uh, to change uh, the government, to, to change, uh, to right. be able to, to take part in the also political um, um, political life. Yes. But uh, yes, but uh, the regime didn't want it. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of this uh, group, which was uh, so like labeled as enemy, as uh, something from the uh, Western, which is which was not um, uh, welcome yeah. at, at this time. So were LGBTs, and uh, at this time it was uh, uh, launched the homophobic campaign with the law against uh, so-called propaganda. Of homosexuality okay. among minors, among yes. minors. So uh, we couldn't uh, work with uh, teenagers, and we cannot work with teenagers still now. Mm -hmm. Yes. So people uh, who are younger than eighteen cannot enter the festival, cannot uh, uh, get all the informations offline. Maybe they can do it online, yeah. but we 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 uh, shouldn't um, distribute our information to them. Yeah. So this yeah. is this is the the yeah, goal of this uh, of, mm -hmm. yes of this of this law, and uh, not only this law, uh, but uh, also the climate. The climate uh, became became host, more hostile uh, uh -huh. against LGBT people. Uh, so it was the politi the politic didn't um so um, it, people it, who persecute sorry yeah it really influenced and the people as well it seems yes yes yeah. of course and s since this time so uh, i would say the the community pol politicized uh -huh. at itself through yeah. all these uh, events and, and and all the agenda politicized right. not uh because of us but because of the politics yeah exactly yes Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, I'd want to add something. Yeah, please. Positive. Um, so I can say that now um, there are really a lot of people and um, a lot of media who mm -hmm. support uh, who support us. Yeah. Uh, of course, first of all, uh, I speak about the media and bloggers who write about uh, queer culture, yeah. but. At the same time, we have um, a lot of uh, partners yeah. um, and a very large number of media and bloggers who don't specialize in uh, LGBT topics. Uh, for example, they translate um, 
news about city, world culture, entertainment, and other. But uh, they support um, LGBT culture and uh, LGBT festival like yes. uh, Bok Obok. And uh, I really believe that it's a very good sign that oh, uh, the Russian society is becoming more tolerant and open-minded. Mm -hmm while yeah. uh, Russian government uh, politics still homophobic. Yeah, yeah. then let's talk about the current situation in Russia because we've seen in the very uh, recent past, only like a month and a few weeks ago, uh, immense protests against uh, the government. Um, do you think that this particular sociopolitical momentum um, could help the the situation of, of LGBTQ communities across Russia? Uh, so it's very uh, unclear if uh, how yeah. uh, this situation can impact uh, especially the LGBT movement. Because um, uh, on, there can be three uh, scenarios uh, of development. Yeah. So the first can be that uh, all the repressions from the state go to an, to other actors. Yes. And uh, at this time, we can maybe uh, be uh, uh, have more space uh, mm -hmm. to work, a little more space to communicate, little more spe space uh, to reach media and in gen public in general. Yeah. Uh, but uh, on the other on the other hand, um, all the repressions can uh, be uh, linked to everybody who is mm -hmm. who is uh, not strictly uh, the so government line. Yeah, and uh, so it can it can have a negative impact also on the LGBT movement. I see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but. It, it, Though we uh, we have a distance between uh -huh. uh, the our movement and the uh, political movement, so yeah. uh, political but movement for to change the regime. So uh, we dis we have this distance because we, we speak uh, about social uh, social changes. Yeah. About social, social, social changes, and not about the end of the regime. Yes, it's yeah, not, it's not uh, the goal of the of, of the movement. And uh, yeah. if the government and people from the government are more open, so we are ready. We are ready mm -hmm. to work with also with the government because it's a part. Yes, it's yeah, part of, of the country. Of course. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And we are ready to to work and communicate with different uh, actors uh, mm -hmm. in the. Uh, in the government, although it's very homophobic and transphobic, yes, yes, but uh, we try to reach them too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, and um, so and the third scenario is that uh, it can just stay the same. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. like it was uh, so more or less uh, some waves of homophobic rhetoric and homophobic acts, and then. Uh, more and then less. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, like, like it is now. Yeah, of course. So no, no nobody knows. And yeah, it's Russia, hard to you tell. No, you, 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 never, you never knows what happens uh, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At least the past uh, 30, 20 years of history definitely shows that and that uh, yes. there are a lot of surprises. Um, okay, um, let's talk about then uh, a bit more closely about the the festival itself. When you uh, assemble a program per year, what are your main curatorial considerations? How do you approach putting together a program? Um, so, uh, first, very, very important uh, is to, to see what is act actual uh, in Russia. So yeah. in the community, in yeah. the media, so what topics are discussed, over topics needs to be more discussed, sure. for example. Yeah. So and so we put the program, the film program, uh, from this point of view. Yeah. Um, on one hand, uh, actual issues, actual topics, and on the other hand, uh, new interesting uh, 
discussed uh, films uh, in, uh, from international film festivals, yeah. or, or for example, like Berlinale. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but 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 also other other film festivals. So we, we try to make this combination between uh, actual uh, interesting. Uh, a fashion, also fashionable, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. fashionable uh, films uh, to make public uh, interest, uh, to, to interest public, to make this program attractive for everyone. Yes, uh, for LGBT community, but also for straight people. Yes, who are interested yeah. uh, interested in, in films, which in this part or oh, is very important uh, for yeah. us. Yes, that of we can course. attract attract also straight people. Yes. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it can they can be um, um, strong documentaries, exp experimental uh, films. Yeah. You no. Know, uh, yes. And so we, we try to combine uh, this kind of uh, yeah. program. Yeah. I see. Okay. So then we reach 2020, and uh, the world is facing the COVID-19 pandemic. How did this affect uh, your work at Side by Side? Uh, so, first of all, this is a restriction on offline on offline events, and yeah. we had to move all our activities in uh, online space, yeah. like discussions, uh, movie screenings. Um, but I like to talk about <laughs> positive side. Yeah, please. And um, I should say that maybe this situation gave us uh, some new opportunities. For example, uh, mm -hmm. last year, for the first time, we made an um, online movie mm -hmm. theater. And um, usually people could say only could only watch movies uh, in St. Petersburg or in Moscow. Right. Uh, but last year we succeeded to show movies uh, all over Russia, uh -huh. great uh, online movie theater. Yeah. But um, of course there was uh, some bad things <laughs> about this, yeah. um, and government agencies also used the um, pandemic to disrupt our movie screenings. Oh, okay. um, so they used inspections of anti-COVID measures to cancel offline part of our festival. And uh, we had to limit all our events um, and uh, convert all of them in online space. Mm, I see. Yeah. So two sides. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is definitely something that um, other festivals also mentioned that it has kind of this double effect that migrating certain parts or the entire festival online, it can democratize to a certain extent this whole process because more people have um, access to the festival, more people can see the films, more people can take part in the in the conversation in a way. But of course, um, it still has um, some disadvantages as well, um, particularly that um, the community can't um, really come that way together as as we are used to doing that um and then let's talk about the communal aspect or the community aspect of of uh, film festivals networking is something that's very important particularly in the case of of lgbtq and queer film festivals um how do you manage uh, the the networking aspect now under the pandemic um, so thanks to social media for a chance to continue communicating with our audience. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. it was uh, difficult in um, emotional plan and um, it was difficult to accept uh, the full transition to digital space. Yeah. But um, we hope that this year uh, we'll be, we will be able to meet uh, all our audience in offline. And um, also pand the pandemic uh, changed our partnerships huh. uh, because um, many companies and media uh, are in a difficult situation. So yeah. um, sometimes uh, some media and companies who 
want um, um, who want cooperate with us under normal conditions. They started to support us because we feel uh, that we should uh, support each other because yeah. um, everyone, uh, everybody is feeling it. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like yeah, th yeah, that, that's definitely very interesting to hear. And it's, it's nice that there is this sense of solidarity um, mm -hmm. going on. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, how do you see it? What are your impressions? How did this new situation affect filmmakers in the region, particularly queer filmmakers? And how do you see um, this whole, whole queer film landscape in Russia in light of the pandemic? Uh, so the queer film uh, landscape in Russia is not so big, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. So, because um, there are a lot of difficulties uh, which, uh, which are beginning in the film school, yes, when, uh -huh. the, for example, film students want to make a film, uh, a queer film, so they may not be um, allowed by the administration of the film school or it will be ignored or, or it will be just not supported and uh, or just uh, Per, uh, perceived with um, stereotypes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, but uh, there are still um, uh, queer filmmakers who are uh, who want to make uh, good good movies. Uh, want to uh, research uh, yes uh, this LGBT queer field field, uh, yeah. and there are a lot of interesting uh, stories, a lot of interesting material yes to be filmed. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely, yes. And um, last uh, maybe um, five, uh, seven years, uh, there were even uh, big pictures, uh, mm -hmm. so big queer pictures, pictures yeah. who were distributed also in, uh, in Russia uh, and shown uh, in Russian cinemas. Yeah. Yes, the difficulties, but still, yes. So, and they were big success. So they were... Wonderful. Perceived, yes, they were positive perceived by the audience, so they had good uh, film critics, mm -hmm. and um, yes, um, so they had uh, even prizes uh, got uh, at Russian uh, film festivals. Oh, great! Yeah, 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 yes. But um, but if you if you uh, if you do this film, you you have to understand at once uh, which kind of. Uh, uh, difficulties you can you can uh, you can have yes but yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, the pandemic um, I don't know I don't think that the pandemic changed a lot for yeah. uh, for these people who are prepared for <laughs> every kind of difficulties so the pandemic is not su such a big difficult as a yeah. Russian po homophobic politics yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine that. Yes. Uh, for sure. Okay, uh, let's see then um, how do you look into the future now? Because, um, yeah, of course, uh, you already touched upon this that you are uh, planning for 2021 and that you have hopes that maybe there could be um, a live event as well. Uh, what are your plans and what are your strategies for, for this coming year in particular? So we want, first of all, not to lose our audience. Yeah. And we want to make uh, online events about for very interesting and hot topics, mm -hmm. so that uh, the people uh, that the people uh, uh, can though be in touch in, in touch with us, uh, uh, watch interesting events, uh, take part in discussions online. Yeah. And also, also one of the of our. Um, Activities are to publish uh, interesting LGBT queer materials on our website and distribute them through uh, social media. Yeah. So, uh, and this is about film, and this is also about issues, topics, so social right. political topics. So we continue to work in this area. And for example, Alina is a PR manager, and uh, she. Um, manages all this uh, all this pro uh, process yeah yeah i yes. see 
Yes, and also we work with our volunteer teams in Petersburg and uh -huh. in Moscow. So we try to, to be in touch, to organize interesting events online, but also offline. So to be together, to feel each other, to uh, uh, strengthen each other yeah, uh, in, yeah. the, in, this, in this way. Yes, and we, um, we, we are planning the offline film festival in St. Petersburg in November for yeah. two weeks. And we'll um, uh, make, uh, we, we, we'll uh, also have an online film festival that if we have so many inspections, mm -hmm. anti-COVID measures inspections, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that they will cancel the festival again, that we can continue online. Okay, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Um, yes, um, it's also interesting then to think about it, and I'm very curious about about your opinion on that. Um, how do you see how is this pandemic going to transform the future of of queer film festivals? We see that a lot of things are happening online. Is this gonna stick with us? Um, are we going to go back to more? Um, open spaces and coming together. Um, how 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 do you feel about this? What are your impressions for for the future? Mm, so um, first of all, I hope that vaccination will improve the situation in the near future. Yeah. But my colleagues know that I'm opening to, uh, online. <laughs> And I really miss offline format of everything. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> online, mm -hmm. um, I think, is more um, accessible and often easier. But uh, I believe that live communication is much better and mm -hmm. more effective. So yeah. um, I'm waiting for offline. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're yeah. not alone with that. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but at the same time, uh, online is unavoidable now in our life. So I think uh, this online will stick with us, and uh, will so we can use it uh, as a tool in our mm -hmm. work. Yeah. And so, so we, we we had to be more effective with online. So we had to be to to, to deal with online. So. Like uh, Alina said, we finally arranged the online movie theater yes. last year. Yeah. Yeah, because of the pand because yeah. of the pandemic. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, um, I don't think uh, that we would uh, do it without pandemic. Yeah. Yes, but uh, you know the positive impact is that a lot of people not from Saint Petersburg and Moscow had access to best yes. films. Yes. Yes. Yeah. In Russian and uh, with discussion, and uh, it yeah. was an event for, for yeah. a lot of people. So we will, of course, uh, uh, work with this uh, in the future. Yeah. Yes, but we will do it uh, offline and online. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for, yeah. For, I... for different different purposes. Yeah. No, I mean, it definitely seems like that um, in this very particular um, socio-political context in which side by side is taking place in such a hostile um, environment, it, these online solutions can definitely be um, a good tool to reach as many people as, as possible. Um, yeah. So that definitely seems interesting. Um, what is um it's a bit out of the scope of this of this discussion but um as we were talking about because you so nicely described the the history of this festival and the different stages that you that you had to go through um it just really came to my mind that um how can we tackle um issues of a lacking lgbtq history in in russia and actually in a wider uh, region of central and eastern europe as well uh, when for instance archives are not necessarily the most um, reliable uh, sources for that due to also political and historical reasons um, at the same time, it would be important if we could somehow um, put together um, 
a history of these communities in that uh, region of the continent. Um, and for me, what it seems like that very often filmmakers uh, do this kind of job in their own artistic and creative ways. Uh, how do you see this? What could be a good strategy to kind of show that this is not something that is imported from outside, but this is actually part of of the history of, of this region? Yes, I think uh, this like a historical view on the um, uh, on the community, on the development of the community, and on the on uh, all these uh, historical things which happened to LGBT people, uh, for example, in the twentieth century, yeah, yeah. Uh, could be very big, uh, could be very big victory for for us. Sure. Yes, uh, to show to show all this uh, to ourselves. Yes, to reflect on a lot of things, to know our history, and also to show it to to the bright audience. Yeah, because um, so the LGBT people, how we would say now, were for example not persecuted uh, as hostile as in Western Europe uh, at the beginning of the tw uh, 20th century. Yeah. So, uh, the homosexuality um, was more or less accepted in the society. Mm -hmm. Right. And yes, it was no persecu criminal persecution for this, like, uh, for example, in Germany or in, uh, in England or in other yeah. uh, Western Euro Euro European countries, for example. And it was a, a big hist uh, historical. Um, um, uh, um, a lot of people from the community in the beginning of the 20th century in Russia were more or less open with their sexuality. Yeah. Yes, and uh, a lot of people in the art uh, were openly gay or lesbian or trans people. And um, so it, it's very important to show it and to uh, to speak about it. So to, to make interesting uh, uh, books about it and films right. and uh, yes, and to, to, to discuss it, to, to reflect it, that we uh, don't feel like uh, people from uh, other planet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. So it's very, it's very, very important. And I think it will come. So like uh -huh. uh, stories like this will come and films because it's very interesting material. It is for yeah. filmmakers. Yes, for for, for 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 filmmakers, for for writers. So it it will come and uh, there is a big need of it. Yeah, I, I I think so too. And I would be very eager to to see these stories on the on the big screen. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for um, being here with us today and uh, talking about Side by Side. I think it's very inspiring, your work, and uh, I hope that we will be able to stay in touch and, um, yeah, and like help each other through these, these particularly difficult times that, um, that we are going through because it affects all of us. Um, yeah, so thank you very much and... Uh, I wish you all the best for the for the upcoming edition of Side by Side. And yeah, hopefully we will also see each other in real life soon. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a, bye. Have a nice day. Have a good bell now. Thank you. <laughs> bye guys. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.